Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we are going to learn how to import arrays, how to export arrays inside Excel VBA. And specifically, we're going to learn two ways of doing both. Two ways of importing information or data into an array and two ways to export or you know, take data out of VBA um, into Excel uh, VBA or into the worksheet, if you will. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So <clears throat> to my left here, I have my VBA developer, excuse me, my uh, VB to the right, I have my VBA developer and to the left, I have my Excel worksheet. And so I know these look like the number 11, 12, 21 and 22. But what I'm really trying to do here is I'm trying to say row one, column one right here, row one, column two, row two, column one, and row two, column two. That's what I'm really trying to do here. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import data into from VBA into the worksheet here. So what we need to do is as follows. We need to do use something called option base one. Um, this will make more sense in a second, but what happens is that when you make an array, sometimes it makes like an extra column or you will, that isn't really a problem if you know it does that, but can be if you're not familiar with it. So I'm gonna do that first. Then I'm gonna make my subroutine. I'm gonna call it bring array. That's what I'm gonna call my subroutine. And next I'm gonna dim A. A is gonna basically be my array. And we, do, we don't know the, the dimensions. Most of, you might know sometimes, but many times you will not. And so in this case, we don't know what, what the dimensions are, although you can clearly see it to my left, but just pretend you can't. So that means the data, tape, data type that we have to use is variant. Variant is a very flexible data type that can expand or contract based on the needs of the situation. And so that's all we need to say about that in this particular situation. <clears throat> And we're going to set A to a, our selection. Whoops. So what we have to do is select. What we need to do is we need to highlight or select whatever data we're going to be using like that. And after that, just to make sure everything works, we're going to make a message box here. And this is going to be A. And it's going to be row one, uh, column one like so <clears throat> and then we end the sub routine so now we're going to run this we're just going to go up to the top of the code press f8 and you can see down here in my locals window that we have our variant here and then we go through the selection do the message box and we get the message of row one comma row one column one okay which is 11 just like over here in a1 over here now if we look closely you can see here that we have two parts to our little uh, array here. We got row one, column one, which is 11, row one, column two right here. Now, if I remove this option base part, it'll still work. Well, excuse me. Let me exit out of this first, all right? So I'll erase this just for demonstration purposes. Run it again. Okay, everything's okay. And so you can see here, that it didn't make a difference this time. Sometimes it can cause a problem, but as of as for right now, it did not affect our, our information. So I still recommend you put the option base one just in case, as it can cause problems as I've experienced in the past. Now, we're going to look at a different way to do this. And what we're going to do here is as follows. Let me cancel out this. Let's see here. So bring a rate dim as a variant. So now we're going to set A to, instead of a selection, we're going to put range. This is a slightly different way of doing it. And you just put a comma. This is when you know exactly what you want it to do. So you no longer have to highlight A1 to B2, like so. So everything else is pretty much the same. So I no longer need to have a selection. It will just pull what it needs to pull automatically. And so if we run this, you can see we got the same results. So if you know exactly what you want to pull, you can put use the range function and put what you want inside the uh, parentheses. If you're not sure and you want to select it each time, you use the selection uh, option or the selection function and it'll do that for you. So that was for importing. So in other words, we took our data from over here 
which is inside the worksheet and now it is inside the VBA developer for whatever purposes you may have. That's why we did that. Now we're going to move to exporting now. So exporting is when you're trying to take data out of VBA and you're trying to put it in the worksheet. So we're going in the opposite direction now. So again, I recommend putting option base one. Whoa, let me cancel this out. <clears throat> option base one, sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. And so now we're gonna make our subroutine here and we're gonna call it send array this time because we're sending an array like so. And so we need to dim i as integer and we need to dim j all right so there we go now we need to dim a as a two by two array this time next <clears throat> we need to do our a nested for loop because basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take a, our value of i multiply it by three and then subtract the value of j from it based on the position this will make more sense when you can see it so for for i equals one two two and then inside that for j equals one two two this is what we're going to do the array of ij like so and what are we going to do with these for each position three times i minus j that's what we're going to do yep and so then we're going to explain the range this is going to be for range a1 to B2, like so. Close that out. Dot, dot, sales. And then I, comma, J equals A, I, comma, J. And then we're going to do underneath that we'll put next J like so so go to the next column if you will underneath that we're going to put next I and then we're done a little more space okay so what we're doing here is we're going to have it go methodically through our range here of A1 to B2. And what's going to happen is that when it gets to I1, it's going to do three times I. I is going to be one. Three times one minus J. Then it'll give you a number, all right? And then it's going to go to the next row over or the next column over and repeat this process. And so let me delete these numbers over here inside my worksheet because I no longer need them. I no longer need to have this selected. And so now I can try to run this. So if you look to the left, you'll start to see numbers appear. You can see that in A1, we have a two now. It goes again. Now we have a one in B1. Goes again. Now we have a five in A2, if you're looking to the left. And then we have a four in B2. So looks like everything is working out here. And if you look down here at the bottom, you can see we have our little array here. This is the same information right here to the right in the array. You can now see that inside the worksheet to the left. So we imported data from the VBA developer into the Microsoft Excel worksheet. And that's why we did this. Now there is a one slight variation on this. Let me uh, close this out. And all I do here that is different is I add something called selection A. And so what this does is that it allows me to put my data in a different place. That's all it does. So let me go ahead and type this in. This will make more sense in a second. So right now, what's gonna happen is, is that VBA developer first puts the, the data here and then when it sees selection A, it'll copy it someplace else. That's all that's gonna happen. So I'm gonna copy it right here. Let me delete this first. Like so, and then I wanna copy it right here to A5 to B6. So I go back up here to the top.
So I do F8. I go through all my steps like before. You can see the two. If you look off to your left here, now the one in B1. And then we have our five again in uh, A2. And now we have our four in B2. And then you can see how it was copied down below, as you can see right there, and we exit the subroutine. So again, this time we were able to move or copy our information to a different place. So it allows us to ex export it into two different places inside the Microsoft Excel worksheet. So basically, um, if I had to try to conclude this video, what we learned was is how to import and export data into Microsoft Excel uh, VBA and also the worksheet. So for importing, we learned that first, you want to, of course, set your variant and of course, you know, you know, dim your array or whatever, and then you can uh, highlight your selection or whatever, however you want to do it, and then you can import. When we're talking about importing, we're talking about taking data from um, the worksheet into VBA. When we're talking about exporting, we're talking about taking data from the VBA developer into the Excel worksheet. And so for, the ex for, for exporting, you need to often use uh, nested for loops. I'm sure there's many other ways to do this, but in our example, we use a nested for loop. And simply just to create some play data, if you will, we did three times I, whatever I is, minus J. So um, in the first example, you know, three times one is three, minus J, J was one at the, on the first one, that's why we got a two here. And then we went across like that and did a simple math. And this is how you're able to move data back and forth. In isolation like this, this does, this does not seem to be too useful or valuable. However, when you are dealing with more complex you know, uh, programming and more complex tasks, this can be valuable in different contexts. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you so much for watching and take care.